Hello, I'm Donald Leggett. Welcome to the latest London Southeast CEO interview. I'm joined today by Kirk Adams, CEO of Green Rock Mining, who are a new Greenland focused mining company with four high quality assets. Um, they have a focus on graphite and titanium. Both are designated as critical minerals by the EU and the US. And these Greenland prospects are wholly owned and were acquired as part of the spin out from Alba Mineral Resources last week as Green Rock listed on the London A market and raised 5.1 million pounds. Well, there you go. That was a bit of a mouthful, uh, uh, Kirk. So welcome. Welcome to London Southeast. Thank you very much, Donald. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you. And uh, I understand you're just back from Greenland. So what's it like on the ground out there? Yes, yes. We, uh, we jumped on a, an aeroplane straight away, myself and um, uh, another director. Uh, we went to visit the graphite assets on the ground and we were very favorably impl- impressed. We, we saw the, uh, you know, the outcrops of the graphite on the surface. We designated new drill pad areas um, for the next drilling campaign uh, and even went underground and saw the underground workings from the 1920s. So it was, uh, it was an exceptionally good trip um, and I was very favorably impressed with the quality of the assets. How fantastic to hear. Uh, Green Rock is a newly formed company, spun out, as I said, spun out of Alba Mineral Resources. So let's start by asking you to explain in very broad terms what the Greenland critical mineral strategy is all about. Well, we're just completely focused on Greenland in Green Rock. So um, I guess the clue was in the name. And uh, so we're completely focused on that. And uh, our our idea is that we are going to take these um, four projects, two of which I believe are flagship projects, and drive them very quickly uh, towards uh, production, uh, production and producing, producing mines. That's our that's our aim. And so, what we're actually doing is we're looking um, how we can fast track, for example, the Amitsot graphite project from where it is today, with um, currently, uh, you know, just an exploration target of between 1.7 and 4 million tons in the Amitsok area, how we can take that area and create a project where, where we'll be able to build you know, a plant uh, and start producing from, from that. And there's a series of steps we have to do to, to, to achieve that. Uh, but uh, you know, we're, very, uh, we're very focused on that. And one of the reasons I think that, that I've been brought in to run the, the company, and I'm very honored to do so, is because I'm a mining engineer and I'm a mine builder by, uh, you know, by profession. And so I'm really driven by the idea of how quickly we can get into production and and get that production premium in terms of the value for the company. You do sound like the ideal man for the job. Um, Alba is, of course, led by George Frankiskides, who uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with. He retains a 54% stake in GROC. So now that those assets have actually been purchased from Alba, how do you rank them as commercial opportunities? There are four four high quality uh, prospects that you're you've got to work with? Well, yes. And, and I think, you know, I started uh, looking immediately at the graphite project. And one of the reasons I wanted to look at graphite is because uh, you, you may have heard um, Elon Musk say that uh, the lithium iron battery is misnamed. And he said that because uh, there's 10 times more graphite uh, in a lithium iron battery than there is lithium. And he said it should actually be called a nickel graphite battery. And that's a very interesting sort of thought, because when you look at the demand that is coming from um, ele- for electric vehicles and the growth in the electric vehicles that are projected um, in the world over the next 10 to 20 years, what you're actually seeing is, you know, a, an expansion in demand for graphite that is projected to be 25 times what the current world capability of producing it is. So being in a, in a, involved in a mineral that is so much in demand and will continue to be in demand, driven by an electric vehicle revolution, um, is, you know, is an exciting place to be. And, and our assets are you know, some of the, if not the highest grade uh, graphite uh, in the world from, from our sampling program. Okay. Um, you've, you've, you've just taken out half my questions there. Tell me about Amitsok then. It, 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 presumably, you've just told me you think it does stand a reasonable chance of becoming a graphite mine one day. Well, it was a graphite mine. It was a, a graphite mine in the 1920s uh, and about 5,000 tonnes 
were extracted there. In fact, what they'd actually done is they'd created these tunnels on two different levels uh, and uh, were in the process of, of developing that mine when the price of graphite in 1922, uh, you know, fell through the floor and they were unable to, uh, unable to, to sort of c continue the mining operations. Uh, I guess the demand for pencils wasn't as high as it might be at that stage. Um, I'm being a little bit flippant, but today that demand is completely different and the price and the value of the mineral is completely different. But what that's allowed us to do is to really go inside that mine, look at the look at the structures of the ore bodies and and really see, you know, how how this uh, mine would have been developed. So it's an old mine. And now what we've actually done now is drill, put a series of drill pads along the spine of the island and we've drilled that into the into the um, into the ore structure. Uh, and we're anticipating those results uh, in the uh, in the, the relatively near future, in the next uh, couple of months or so. And that will allow us to put a third dimension in, because currently, what you can see, you can see these structures, these ore bodies, outcropping on surface, and you can sample those. And we've sampled them over a sort of five meter true width in a number of places. And so we, what we've got is we've got grades. The average on the Amet Sok Island. A 28.7% contained graphite, and that is higher than than is found anywhere else in the world. So it's a it's an extremely, I think, prospective area. And this summer, we've just finished this drilling program. You know where we're effectively starting to put in the second dimension. And then Mark Austin and myself, the uh, you know the um, the geological director on the on the project, have been there uh, over the over the last week or so and we've been defining where we're going to put the new drill pads really to to give ourselves a a bigger ore deposit in this particular area and more confidence uh, about the quality of it and we're we're very very i think optimistic that uh, we we designed a program that will allow us um, to to have a large enough resource um, to do a, do a feasibility study on this, and so therefore we're you know we're planning the next drilling campaign, and that will lead, I think, to uh, you know to a feasibility. So uh, tell me what's going to happen over the next twelve months, and is it possible to put some costings alongside that that work program? Oh yeah, so we're we're going to be doing a drilling program, uh, an additional drilling program, was similar to the one that we've just completed. Um, uh, over the next 12 months, so we'll be doing it uh, in in the drilling season next next uh, spring and summer, uh, and that will um, that will cost I think in the region of about six hundred thousand pounds. So that sort of order of magnitude. We'll also be doing some additional work on the Calac deposit, which uh, we spent a great deal of time looking at while we were there, uh, which looks to be uh, larger. Than the uh, than the deposit on the Amit Sok Island. In fact, it's just across the fjord. And um, from that perspective, I think you know, there's there's great opportunity. But my vision is to get a large enough resource that uh, you know from the drilling programs that we have just completed, and we're intent on completing, that will enable us, along with the environmental impact and social impact uh, assessments and plans, um, to put in um, for a for a right to mine. A mining right from the Greenland government, uh, and um, that's our intention, and that's what we're what we're looking to try and do. And of course, then we'll be costing up the cost of the plant to process our material uh, and all of the things that go with the development of a mine. So, so that's that. I would think in twelve to eighteen months we will be looking to to move the, into feasibility. And this is very optimistic thinking, but it's certainly worth the way I'm I'm sort of looking. So we're we're looking to try to, to, to get towards that sort of feasibility um, stage. And then the feasibility will tell us, you know, whether it's commercially uh, practical to build a mine in this particular location. Great. Um, I, I, again, and this is arm waving, you know, it's, uh, it's forward looking statements of me being extremely positive about I, what I think I'm seeing. It's your job to be positive, though, I have to say, Kirk. Uh, can, I, can I turn that positivity towards ilmenite, which is the raw material for titanium? So what are the industrial uses for titanium uh, and what value might ilmenite from the Thule Black Sands project eventually have? You know, put, put, put Thule Black Sands into context for us. OK, well, if you look at if you look at the ilmenite project, it's probably uh, well, it is more advanced than the graphite project. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, equally exciting. I think it's our second flagship project and a project that I truly believe would be a, a mine builder, assuming that uh, what we have seen so far continues to be seen. 
Now, this uh, ilmenite, you asked me what the ilmenite uses are. Um, ilmenite is uh, a titanium iron trioxide. It's converted into titanium dioxide, which is a white opaque mineral that is predominantly used throughout the whole world for paints, um, sunscreen, anything that you want, white goods, anything that you want to, to have a white um, shiny luster to. And so all of the paint in this room will, and, and uh, just about anywhere you look, is, has got ilmenite in it. So the demand for ilmenite has grown by 4.3% a year recently, and it looks to continue to grow into the future. Uh, and, uh, and so as, a, as an industrial mineral, we, we think it's an exciting place to be. Uh, the price has, has, uh, has grown by from $180 a tonne two years ago to $375 a tonne right now for ilmenite concentrate uh, in China. So from that perspective, you can see that there's this very significant growth in, in, the, uh, in, in the price of ilmenite uh, and there's a, a growth in demand. Um, and that's one of the reasons I think that uh, you know, both Europe and the USA have put ilmenite um, and, and titanium on their list of critical minerals because they, they feel there's a potential for supply constraint. And we're in a very good position, I think, um, to, to start to meet that supply constraint. And so let me tell you a little about, about the project. Or, yes, know. I was going to say, yeah, my next question is, you know, what happens in the next 12 months and what are the costings? You know, it's exactly mm. the same as Amitsoc. Well, it's, it's actually a little bit further ahead than Amitsoc. Um, the, we already have 19 million tonnes, 8.9% uh, contained ilmenite uh, in, in a jork resource. So from that perspective, we know, we know what we've got. The drilling program this summer, particularly concentrated in the southern area of the deposit, and we've defined the basement of that uh, using that drilling program. So I'm anticipating, and I think I, I, I don't think it would be too optimistic to say I'm anticipating, you know, a, a new, an additional resource coming from that drilling program, which which uh, you know went pretty well, I have to say. I mean, I think the drilling company did well uh, on the program this year. And so we're, we're very confident that we'll get a bigger resource and more confidence in that resource. When, so, do, when do we find out those results? Ah, well, um, <laughs> unfortunately, it takes a long time to get them from Greenland to, um, to our, uh, you know, our uh, metallurgical testing company uh, in, in Brisbane, in Australia. And they're specialists in this area, specialists in, in uh, heavy mineral sand. So we sent it to one of the, one of the best uh, specialist groups in the world. Uh, and uh, it will take about two months or so on the sea to get there. Uh, and then, of course, they have to do their assay results and, and write, the, write their reports and things. So, uh, you know, I think optimistically, we'd be saying three to four months, we'll have those results um from from that program but you know obviously you know looking at that and feeling optimistic about it our next step you know it would be to start to look at the feasibility and i'm i'm very convinced we'll to put a feasibility uh, on this project based on the on the data that uh, that we're anticipating from the drilling program so from that perspective i think we're 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 in, in the starting position and ready to race ahead to try to uh, try to get uh, Get this project moving forward quickly. Okay, let's turn to let's turn to money. That's uh, is always a useful uh, topic. Of the five point one million raised, how much did you spend acquiring the assets from Alba, and how much is available for the development mark for your capex requirements for your GNA to run the business? Uh, mm. Discuss. <laughs> it's a, it's a very good question. We, we actually acquired the assets from Alba for shares, and so none of that five point one million was used. For, for the purchase of the assets. And so that's one of the reasons that the, the market cap of the company at, at listing uh, was uh, 11 million pounds because uh, 6 million pounds of value that, uh, that came across. And that's why they have 53% of, uh, of, uh, uh, you know, of the share capital that came across um, you know, during, during the process of the IPO. Uh, and so there's none of that money is being, has been used for for the uh, for the acquisition of the assets, it's all going to be used for you know, um, for drilling programs, for exploration, uh, additional exploration drilling programs, for um, uh, feasibility type studies, scoping studies, pre feasibility studies, and so on and so forth, uh, and um, and the environmental 
impact and social impact assessments and, and mitigation plans that we need to put in place. Uh, there are other listed companies working in Greenland. So why should we buy Green Rock shares rather than Blue Jay or any of those other listed companies? Well, I mean, I look at I, if I was to look at Blue Jay and look at uh, look at Green Rock, um, they have an asset that uh, they have defined that is contiguous with our asset. You know, if you look at it, we run along the same coastline. We're right next door. Um, their asset is is an extremely good asset. Their initial um, maiden resource was uh, 23 million tons at 8.8% contained ilmenite, which compares, you know, with ours at um, 19 million tons at 8.9% contained ilmenite. You can see how the projects look look similar. Our, our initial maiden resource is, is the same as theirs. They are a lot further along uh, along the development curve, you know, because they have done you know, trial shipping, they've done, uh, you know, they've, they've, they've mined some material and they put 45,000 tonnes of ilmenite onto, onto a bulk carrier um, and, and sent that as a, as a trial shipment. And so from that perspective, they're, they're, they're ahead of the, uh, the curve in terms of development, a long way ahead of the curve. But if you look at their share price today at 100, and I'm going to uh, just, I think it's between 120, 130 million pounds. And you look at our share price at uh, sort of nine million pounds, roughly. Um, you can see that there's an opportunity for us to become them just just on the Ilmenite alone. Well, and 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 that's what I would say. I mean, I think the upside potential for us to you know follow them down the curve, learn from the things that they've done, you know, and and they've been extremely successful. Uh, and uh, you know, they've given us, I think, a roadmap. Um, to success, and we will, you know, we 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 will be following that roadmap. You know, it would be um, a sensible thing to do, and so that's what we're doing. You know, we're looking to get a, a bigger resource from the drilling program this year. We'll be looking to put a feasibility study uh, on that on that resource. Uh, you know, from the drilling program, uh, and of course, you know, then uh, you know, following that, them up the development curve. And so you know, and, and, and I really do think that they're doing a fantastic job, and and we're just we're just following them, and and we're a tenth of the price. So my final uh, question for you, Kirk, uh, what kind of news flow can we expect? What are the, what are the milestones you expect to, to hit in the next 12 months? In the next 12 months? Well, we're going to have, uh, we, at some stage, we'll be getting the results, the assay results from, um, from the AMETSOC, uh, AMETSOC drilling program that occurred this, this summer. And so that will be, I think, uh, you know, an interesting, uh, interesting piece of news. And we, uh, we would hope to get uh, uh, something that we can tell the market, which will be quite exciting from that. Uh, so that's coming. Uh, we're anticipating that we will uh, that we will also get uh, slightly later in the in the year the results from uh, the second drilling program uh, and uh, you know the details of that uh, that. Uh, drilling program I've just been describing in the Ilmenite uh, that again I think will hopefully give us a, additional additional resource and and greater confidence about that uh, that resource. So those are the two sort of key things that are coming in the next uh, three to six months or so. Uh, and then of course you know we would we would hope to be announcing uh, one additional drilling programs uh, in Amitsok itself to you know to get ourselves to size size a size that is suitable. For a feasibility study and also the feasibility studies themselves with the idea that uh, you know within 12 to 18 months we'll be looking for um, you know uh, you know mining uh, mining rights mining licenses from the Greenland government um, in, in one or at least one and possibly both of those projects so that's what I'm what I'm driving towards. Kirk Adams CEO at Green Rock newly listed Green Rock Thank you so much for joining us today. That was absolutely fascinating. We've heard about Greenland and all your different activities there. At Green Rock have an active chat board in London South East. So please do jump on there and share your thoughts about this interview and anything else related to Green Rock. If you'd like to comment on GROC on Twitter, our Twitter account is at London South East. And to get alerts to interviews as useful as this one, you can Google London South East YouTube channel Thank you for watching and as ever, do stay safe.